In today's tutorial, we are going to be going ahead and creating objectives for our horror game inside of Roblox Studio. To start, we're going to go right into Starter GUI right here, click on the plus icon and insert a screen GUI. This screen GUI we're going to rename to Objective GUI just like this. Inside of here, let's click on the plus icon and we're going to insert a text label. Now you can feel free to decorate this and customize it however you would like to. It doesn't really matter where we position it at all because we're going to be changing the position inside of the property. So we're going to set the anchor point to 0.5 comma 0.5. And you'll notice this will kind of offset our text label a bit, but that's okay because we're going to counter the anchor point by changing the position to 0.5 on the x-axis, which is going to position it right in the middle, comma 0 on the offset. And and then 0 point probably 8 on the y-axis that way it'll be relatively near the bottom i'm also going to change the background transparency up to one and the size we can change to 0 0.4 comma 0 comma 0 0.06 comma 0 this will just make it a little bit longer like this i may actually go for 0 0.5 on the x-axis like this Let's go down a little bit and now we can mess around with the text. So we're going to say text scaled will be equal to true. This will make it bigger. I'm also going to change the text color to a little bit of like a soft whitish yellow color like this. You don't want it to be just white or just black because that's not very realistic for a horror game. I kind of like mine to be a little off white. I'm also going to change the font over to a more creepy one. Maybe like Amatic SC right here. I think this one looks pretty cool. And for the text, we can just leave Leave this as nothing or you can make a little sample text for it which is like objective sniff the roses something like that just to get an idea of how it's going to look i'm also going to insert a ui stroke inside of this text label i'm just going to have the thickness be about maybe one maybe even two actually just to give a nice little outline around the text and this text label is just renamed to objective text now inside of replicated storage inside of our remotes folder let's go ahead click on triggered cutscene we can actually press ctrl and d to duplicate this and we're going to rename it to set objective just like this and then inside of our objective gui let's click on the plus icon and insert a local script and right up here let's just start off with some services so I'm going to make a comment that right up here that will just say services to kind of block off where our services are going to be and keep our code nice and organized. I'm going to say local replicated storage is going to be equal to game get service replicated storage like so. I'm also going to get the player service, which will be equal to game colon get service players. And if you don't know, replicated storage is this service right here that we have our remotes folder inside of, as well as our other remote events. And the player service is this player service right up here, which holds all the different players inside of your game. I'm going to drop down. Let's get another comment for our variables here. Once again, keeping the code nice and organized. We're going to say local player will be equal to players dot local player and then we can create another comment down here for our functions and here's where we're going to go ahead and we're going to say replicate storage dot remotes dot set objective dot on client event you're going to connect a function and this function is going to take a few different parameters and by a few different i really only mean the one because we're just going to put objective as the parameter and this is going to be a string that we're going to pass to this function here now here if you want a more simpler approach to your objective you can very well just say script dot parent dot objective text dot text will be equal to objective and this will work perfectly fine However, but if you want to actually create a typewriter effect for your objective, then we're going to go ahead and write for i will be equal to 1, comma, we're going to say string dot len, which will return the length of a string, and the string that we're going to be turning the length of is going to be our objective string. And we're going to do this. We're going to say script dot parent dot objective text dot text will be equal to string dot sub this time which if you look at what this one does it returns the substring of s that starts at i and continues until j so i'm going to explain what this means you'll see here that it actually takes three different parameters so we're going to say string dot sub and the first parameter is going to be the original string of which you want to extract what we call the substring and so this is going to be our objective parameter that we're passing through to our function I can put a comma right here. 
the second parameter is going to be the starting index of the actual substring we want to extract. And so since we want the text to start at the very first letter, we're going to start here at one. And then from there, we're going to have the end index which is our third parameter. And instead of being the starting index, this is going to be the ending index of the substring you want to extract. So this will be I right here. Then we simply say wait. So this can be any amount of time that you want to be in between each letter that gets typed out. For me personally, I'm going to be doing 0.025, I believe. That's a pretty good way to go about it. And that's just going to go ahead and type out our objective. And that's actually all that we need to go ahead and do for our local script or our client side of our objective. So we can actually close off this local script right here. And now we can fire any event to this set objective remote event right here. And we can change the objective however we want to. So let's go over to server script service. I'm going to insert a brand new script. I'm just going to give a simple example. We're going to say game dot players dot player added. We're going to connect a function with player as the parameter. And we're going to say game dot replicated storage dot remotes dot set objective. We're going to fire to the client and the player is going to be the client that we're going to be firing to. And then we need to put a comma inside of the fire client parentheses right here. And then we also need to provide our objective. So it's best to say objective first off, and then we can actually give our objective. So this will be, I don't know, maybe chop the tree, something like this, or find the campfire to actually be a better one for this game. And I'm also just going to put a wait up here of five seconds. So it doesn't happen immediately once we join the game, but after five seconds. So let's join the game. And then after five seconds, it should say, yep, objective, find the campfire just like that. So now our objective is to go ahead and find the campfire. Now, what happens when we go ahead and find the campfire, you may ask? Well, let's go ahead and insert a trigger part right here. It'll just be about this big. I make it red and about half transparent as an example. And this part is going to be a objective trigger, just like this. And side of here, let's insert a script. And we're going to say script.parent.touched connect function. And this will take hit as the parameter. We're going to check if hit.parent find first child humanoid. Then this will check that if the object that actually hit our part has a humanoid inside of it, which means that it's actually a player or at least a character. Then we're going to say local player will be equal to game.players get player from character hit.parent. And then if it was a player that actually touched it, and I guess up here, let's also go ahead and say debounce will be equal to false. And so if player and debounce will be equal equals to false, then debounce will be equal to true. And then we can go ahead and say game.replicateStorage.Remotes.SetObjective. We can fire to the client as well, which will be the player that touched our part. And then once again, specifying our objective, which will be, I don't know, maybe put out the fire this time instead of just finding the fire. And then after about five seconds or so, well, actually, we don't need to set the debounce back to false at all, so we can leave it at that. Let's go ahead, press play now, and you'll notice that our, well, once our objective changes, such as objective find the campfire, then let's go over here and touch this part. I don't think I enabled can collide equals to false at all, but you'll see that as soon as we touch it, it will change our objective here. So that's how you can change the objective when the player joins the game, when the player touches a part as well. Now you can change the objective with any event. All you have to do is simply fire to the client, specify the player as a parameter, and then the objective that you want to send over as well. You can do this whenever a tool gets activated, whenever a light gets turned on, literally any event you could ever think of that's inside of Roblox Studio. So I hope this tutorial helps you with your very own objectives inside of Roblox Studio. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.